Hey, you guys, um, this is just a very informal video. I'm not even at my desk, obviously. I'm, I'm here in my kitchen. I have literally just um, been out walking the dog. It's late, um, and I just wanted to come on here and talk to you guys quickly. Uh, as most of you know, um, Doug Kramer from Days But Not Confused uh, was found dead in his apartment, I believe, yesterday. I had just gotten to know Doug. We were doing a lot of episodes together. I feel like we jived really well. We had a lot of very similar beliefs. And um, I think if you guys remember, I, I talked about his um, channel and how amazing, what just amazing research he had done with Scientology and of course the bigger picture of what's going on in our world. And he was just an incredibly kind person. From the minute we spoke and um, started filming together, I, I just really felt a very deep friendship with him, almost like a brother. And um, he would hang out with us uh, or with me after we would finish uh, filming a lot of the times. He would hang out on Zoom with my boyfriend and me. And he, he always wanted to see Ravi, my dog. He loved dogs. And so we would get Ravi out and we would sit and talk and we would talk about river Phoenix. And, you know, I just really felt like this was a, a, a friendship that was going to last a very long time. And I was really excited to, to not just have Doug in my life to do content with, um, but to also just to have him as a friend. And when I first found out, um, I last spoke to him on, um, let me pull my text messages up here. Let's see here. That's my dog. So I last spoke to him. Um, I had sent him a text on Saturday, December 2nd at 3.47 p.m. I had sent him a um, a really great video by um, uh, Mark Vicente. I believe that's his name from Nexium. My mind's going a little blank right now. And I just said, check out this guy from Nexium. He's, talk he's taking his cold experiencing and calling out the three-letter agency I can't say on YouTube. And so I had sent him... Um, that YouTube. And he said, thanks. On this, on Saturday, December 2nd at 10.09 p.m., he said, thanks. Sorry for the late response and definitely down to do the hypnosis episode. We were trying to schedule a hypnosis episode with Catherine Edwards. And so Monday morning at 8 a.m., I said, no worries. Does Friday work for you? Now, I didn't hear back from him right away, but that isn't shocking to me. Doug is a lot like myself when you are on YouTube or have a job um, where you can't have your phone on you. It sometimes takes a while. I'm really bad. Sometimes I'll take a day or two to respond to text messages sometimes because I'm either filming a live show or my phone is on silent and it just gets overwhelming. And so Doug was kind of the same way. Like he would text me and I would respond and then we wouldn't talk for a couple of days, but uh, you know, he's, he's a busy man. So I didn't really think anything of it. And so by Wednesday at 10 2 AM, um, I had no idea at this point. Apparently Monday night, he did not show up for a live and people were worried, but I, I didn't know that. And so I had no idea. And so I texted him on Wednesday morning at 10.02 a.m. Hey, can we do next Friday the 15th for the hypnosis show? I'm so slammed this week because we had talked about doing it that Friday and I got really busy. And so I was like, let's see if we can do it the next Friday. So Catherine, Doug and I, and I, I never, I never heard back. And then I started getting messages from people about them being worried about him. And it, at first I wasn't super concerned. I mean, Doug's a big boy. He's, he's 50 years old. So, you know, and he was reconnecting with his mom. So I thought, you know what, just give it a few days. He might've just like decided to take some time off of the internet. I've done that before where I, I made that mistake once before where I decided to go dark for a couple of days and I did not tell my audience and I got, I had people worried about me and like, are you okay? And so now when I go dark, I do actually say something to people just so they know um, I'm okay and that nothing's happened. I'm just going dark for a couple of days. 
And um, I was keeping up with like Steve Mango's videos to try to keep up with with what was going on because he's in California with Doug and had known Doug for a while. I was in, I've been in touch with Tommy Scoville, who um, we actually talked about this morning before I found out the news about potentially getting a private investigator because apparently no one was hearing from Doug. Apparently we had heard that his parents, his mother, because he was reconnecting with his mom, ha had not heard from him. And so that's when I started to get more and more concerned. So I did find out today from the coroner's report that he was found um, dead. It, it, listen, I, you know, I know that depression looks different on different people, but I'm telling you, I don't think he was suicidal. I, I don't think that he was in a really good place from what I could tell. And the, the time I spent with him on zoom, I never met him in person, but the times we, we spent on zoom together, just hanging out, he seemed to be in a really good place. And I remember saying to my boyfriend, like, we should invite Doug for like Thanksgiving next year. We should invite him, you know, to come to Atlanta and just, you know, give him kind of a second family. And, you know, and thank God we found out he was reconnecting with his mom and all that kind of stuff. So um, I think he, he was really excited. You know, he was excited about the hypnosis episode with all these other projects he was working on. That's not somebody who was thinking about ending it. And from what I understand, it does look like it, ju it just was his time. And hopefully he died peacefully in his sleep. I know he was a heavy smoker. And um, when I first started filming with him, I did not want him to feel uh, comfortable. I, I told him like, listen, we're going to be super casual. If you want to smoke, you're absolutely welcome to smoke on my channel. I don't care. And I know that people that go through extreme trauma, a lot of times will smoke a lot because it calms the vagus nerve down. And so I am, totally totally fine with that and so um yeah we it's just um you know there's so many shitty people in the world and the fact that he was such an amazing person like truly i know he had trauma but you know what he had worked through a lot of his trauma he'd spent 14 years before he even got on the internet working through his trauma doesn't mean it wasn't all gone we all have trauma that we work through but despite everything he'd been through he was a very grounded person and the fact that he woke up to scientology and the greater world in one swoop i mean he was working in hollywood he was a working actor and just gave it all up because he started to realize what was really going on in the world and that is so admirable i kept telling him he was really brave and he had a lot of courage and he was like no 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 i just didn't have a choice i had to do it i was terrified the whole time and i was like no but that's the definition of courage right and being brave is that you're scared but you do it anyway it would have been so easy for him just to stay in scientology and just to keep going on the trajectory he was going on to keep his family to keep his friends to keep his career but that just shows how much integrity he had as a human being that he was willing to give it all up because he found out the truth. And I know that Catherine and I are probably going to talk about this on Thursday and I will probably be doing a couple more tribute videos to Doug, but I just, I felt like I needed to come on um, now that the day has passed and it's really just kind of integrated into me what has happened when I first found out this morning, right before I filmed with Jay, I was in shock. Um, and now I'm just trying to digest it. And he was a really good person. I cannot express to you guys. He cared so much about people. And he had said to me before, and I don't know if this was on a show or off a show that he felt really bad for things that he possibly did to others when he was in Scientology. And it felt like he was constantly trying to make amends with himself. And I would laugh and be like, Doug, you're fine. Like, dude, like it, it's something you had to go through and you went through it. And now you're, you're helping so many people and you're bringing your experiences to a wider audience. And I, I can't speak for him, but I, when I reached out to him and said, hey, I love your Summer of PSYOPs series. I love, I think your, your research is fantastic. I myself 
um, aware of what's going on in the world and I do deep dives, please come on my channel. I'd love to interview you. And when we got to know each other offline, we talked about a, a controlled opposition and the stuff he had been through with controlled opposition, the stuff I'd been through with controlled opposition. I think I want to hope that he felt like he had friends that there, that he felt like he had people out there that understood maybe not from a, the Scientology perspective, but what it's like to be um, the target of an opposing opposition, a controlled opposition, I should say rather a controlled opposition. Right. And so I hope, um, I hope I, I would like to hope that in his last hours, he was at peace with his life and um, that he was happy. He did have a faith in, a, in, in something Sorry, guys, my nose is running. I'm not going to edit this. I'm just going to throw it up. So sorry about that. Um, he did have a faith in something bigger than him. I know he did not like to use the word God. Um, I, I think that uh, because of his cult experience, he wanted to shy away from that word. But he did believe in something bigger. And we would talk a lot about the law of one offline and the fourth density positive. So I would like to personally think that he is now in fourth density positive and he's just going to sit there and wait for the rest of us to eventually get there too. And um, you know, Doug, if you can if you can hear this, I am so honored and grateful that I got to know you, and not only just you as a personality on YouTube, but I am so grateful that I got to know you as a friend and just as a human being excluding YouTube, just off camera, I feel very honored that I got to spend time with you and listen to you. And you definitely were a light in this dark world and you will be missed. And I hope you guys go to his channel, Days But Not Confused. I have no idea how long it's going to stay up, but please pull his videos, save his videos if you like them in case they're gone because his work was unbelievable. That's a way we can remember him. I do have, um, let's see here. I do have a thing up on my community tab. I'll share a screen here quickly. If you, um, let's see here, here we go. Sorry guys. If you would like to leave some kind words for Doug, um, hopefully his, his family that he was just reconnecting with um, will see this. I was telling one of my friends today that I actually was like wanting to set Doug up with some of my single girlfriends because he's just such a great, a great guy. I'm going to read some of y'all's comments before we head out tonight. Um, been trying to figure out what happened to Doug and truly saddened to see this. R.I.P. Doug, my heart is heavy. Condolence, condolences to his friends and family will be missed from Australia. Such a sad day. Doug is very much loved and will be very much missed. Rest in peace, friend. Truly heartbroken by the news. I'm not usually bothered by the passing of people I don't know in person, but this has really got me. He was a good person. He was a really good person. I'm sorry for your loss, Bryce. He looks familiar. I just can't figure out where I've seen him. Rest easy, Doug. Jennifer, he you've probably seen him on my channel. Um, he was also an actor. So if you are American, he was in the soap opera Passions and a couple other shows. So you might recognize him from the movies as well, TV. So devastating to hear this when I woke up this morning. He was a rare soul who showed immense strength and empathy and absolute courage. The world just got darker without him in it. So until we meet again, rest easy, my friend. You are loved and appreciated. Lost for words, Doug will be missed, RAP. I am so heartbroken. Rest in peace, Doug. Rest easy, Doug. Just recently found you through Doug, and I love all your episodes together. So sad about this new news. Doug was so loved. Well, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And yeah, Doug will definitely be uh, missed off camera. I mean, beyond. I mean, since Doug was the type of person that if he was still alive and he called me tomorrow and said, I'm done with YouTube. I don't want to be a public person anymore. I would be totally fine with that. And I would just be like, can we still be friends? Because can we still talk? Can we still hang out? Because he, he would hang out with my boyfriend on zoom. Like, you know, he, he definitely felt like a real friend. And so um, it, it went beyond just doing content together. I, he just, just was a great guy. This is so shocking. He will be missed. RAP Doug. I'm very sorry. 
to hear this i just started his channel a few weeks ago beth yeah go and save all those videos because i have no idea it could stay up for a really long time i don't know um, i don't know how that works when someone dies so sorry for your loss r.i.p doug what happened can anybody please tell me so that's all we know so far is that he was just found um dead again the cops the lapd don't um don't actually know what happened uh they they say that doesn't seem like there's foul play or that he unalived himself sorry guys i gotta blow my nose again um, but we will definitely keep you posted um, the more that we find out about him sad face who is he be nice to know let's see what this person responded uh, looks like it just recently happened give rice some time i'm sure she We'll share what happened. Yeah, thank you, Robin. Um, so Carolyn, he he was a um, another content creator that I did a lot of shows with and got to know. I, and I was saying this to Tommy Scoville. You know, most of the people that I film regularly with, and this is just how I am as a person. Um, if I film regularly with a person, I feel I consider that person a friend. You know, first and foremost, I am a human being and they are human beings and I never want to exploit anybody. I never want to, you know, it, it is business as well. Like it is content we are creating for our futures and for our um, our stuff. But there's also a human being on the other side of that Zoom. And most of the people, again, that I film with regularly, I consider them friends. I mean, Catherine Edwards is one of my closest friends at this point. We've been filming together for four years, you know, and I feel like Doug was becoming one of those people. And um and so beyond YouTube, beyond um, work, it's the friendship and the person that I personally am gonna, going to miss the most. And so, um, yeah, I, you know, I'll share this with you guys. Um, I don't know if he said this on a video or if it was off a video. And that speaks a lot about Doug. He was the same off camera as he was on camera. He was a very genuine person. And um, he said, we're talking about everything he went through when he left Scientology. And he said, I think that's what resurrection means, the resurrection of the soul. It's going through the dark night of the soul and coming out the other end. And I just was like, yeah, that's what the Eastern philosophy says. And the fact that's one of the last things he said to me on zoom before he passed away that, that that he realized that's that it was a rebirthing that going through the fire going through the destruction where your illusion seeing the truth through the illusion and you come out the other side more compassionate more refined it's you know the dead rising in christ that has nothing to do with the physical body resurrecting it has to do with the soul it has to do with the soul going through its own ego death and coming out the other side and he said something to the effect of i never want to go through that again but i'm so glad it happened so glad it happened and so with that being said i hope that he is resting easy and i hope that he is laughing at us being sad from the other side my my grandfather had a near-death experience i've talked about that before and after he died and came back he never feared death and in fact at his own sister's funeral my great aunt's funeral he was giggling the whole time because he was like jane is fine she is in such a wonderful place right now it's us who are the ones that are not not in a good place but she's fine and so i would i would hope to think that about doug that he is fine right now and that he is on the other side and he is reuniting with his own father maybe my grandparents are there to to introduce themselves to and maybe river phoenix is there to finally meet doug because we know he loves river phoenix so all right you guys i don't really know how to end this so i'm just going to end it uh leave anything you want down in the comment section below any kind words you have to say to doug hopefully his family will see this and i know that they were disconnected for a long time because of Scientology. And I know they must have a lot of regret for all the years they missed with their son and with their brother, but um, hopefully they can read these comments and know what a truly wonderful human being he was and what a gift he was to this world. All right, you guys, I love you all. I will talk to you soon.